business English a scam? I mean, you pay for a business English course. You learn thousands of business English phrases and vocabulary. And then you go to a real business meeting and it's just like, I think we're conflating multiple issues here. It's just about finding that balance. We need a holistic approach here. This needs an action point. So what are the next steps? Can we just circle back? I think what we need to do is just find balance. Business English is like a whole other language inside English. And all of my students have the same complaint. They go to their meetings at their English speaking companies and they always feel like they don't know English, they don't have enough vocabulary and everyone in the office is looking at them like they're stupid and can't speak English. It's not your English, it's not your ability, it's not your intelligence. There's this other kind of business English Let's call it corporate English. Let's call it bullshit corporate English because there are all these expressions which everyone uses, everyone's expected to use, but actually they mean nothing. So here are the top corporate English expressions, how to use them and how you can stop feeling stupid at work. First, and I hate this expression. It is what it is. It is what it is. Of course it is what it is. Now, you probably have this expression in your language. It's basically when you have a situation that you can't change or sometimes you just don't want to change. Yeah, my kid's really sick. Can I take today off? Oof, your kid's sick? That sucks, but I mean, it is what it is, you know? No, you can't take any time off, so just come to work. I'll see you in 20 minutes. Next one is, it's not useless, but again, it's that weird corporate English way of talking. When you have a meeting, and you decide we need to do this thing, this thing, and this thing. Put it on a list. We need to do these things. Th that's a to-do list, right? But no, in corporate English, these are now action points. Why? Because it sounds, I, I don't know, I don't know. Corporate English is like the linguistic version of this guy. Just put it in the bin, we don't need it. What we were thinking is to take a holistic approach. Holistic means the whole, right? But because it's like a spiritual word, businesses now use it to sound, what, deeper? More connected to the universe? Why? Why do you need this? You don't. We really need a holistic approach to our advertising on YouTube. Again, this means to consider every factor in this problem. But if you have ever solved a problem, you know that's what you do anyway. It means absolutely nothing and contributes zero to the conversation. A holistic approach, as you say. I read somewhere that the most hated expression in English is, at the end of the day. You know, at the end of the day, we're all just animals. And uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, you gotta be happy. I don't understand the hate for this expression specifically. Anyway, it means forget everything else. This is what's important. Like, listen, I do love you, but at the end of the day, I am leaving you. So I don't think this expression is terrible. Although people do use it a lot. Maybe that's why people overuse it. I'm not really sure. This next one has almost become a meme in business English. Yeah, we just need to find a balance. On the surface, it makes sense. Of course you need balance. <laughs> like, what are you saying? You're actually saying nothing with this expression. It, again, it's that useless corporate business speak that no one needs, we can throw it in the bin, no one would miss it. But the reason that this expression is so stupid and unnecessary is it's basically like saying, I just think before we do things, we need to think about it first. You're literally saying the most nothing expression that no one would disagree with because you're just saying we need to think first. Okay, the next one is conflate. This is actually a very good verb to learn because it's not just for business English. It's very good for discussion and debate. Hey, no worries. It's for paper. It's not a lined How garbage. How am I supposed to know it's for paper? If I see your garbage, can I, th I throw garbage in there? I think you're conflating garbage with paper. When you're having an argument with someone about any topic, and they argue that 
this thing and this thing are actually one thing, they are conflating or combining those two ideas. A classic example would be when someone says, um, well, evolution's just a theory. <sighs> they are conflating what the everyday use of theory is and the actual meaning of theory in like academic science. It's dumb. But yeah, so you can use this. This one's good. This one's not useless. Now in a business context, this is actually very useful. For example, if someone tries to oversimplify a very difficult, complex, big problem, for example, they say, we're losing money and it's because we have too much staff. They might be conflating, the company doesn't have much money and they just want to fire people and they don't really know how the company works. In that case, yes, they are conflating two different things. To play it by ear, this is maybe the only expression you can use anytime, anywhere, not just business. It's good for anything. It means to make a plan, but not yet, because the situation might change. So let's wait a bit longer, find out some more information, then make the plan. You're right, let's play it by ear. Like this. What should we do Friday night? Friday, well, I'm working, but I don't know what time I finish. Oh, I was gonna say let's hang out, but let's play it by ear, see what time you finish. And finally, we sometimes use the term to unpack something. This doesn't mean unpack like a suitcase. No, well, kind of. It basically means to analyze something in its small parts, like this. Okay, so Mike says our new product sucks. Let's unpack this. By it sucks, he means it's expensive and doesn't work. I think he has a point. But we start selling this product next week, so it is what it is, I guess. Would you unpack that for me? Listen, everyone, it is what it is, okay? At the end of the day, users aren't spending money on our platform. We're losing money faster than Elon's having babies, so. Thoughts, opinions, ideas. I think we can let a few more people go. I think we're conflating multiple issues here. It's the advertisers who aren't generating revenue for it's us. It's just about finding that balance. If we could just reach out to potential advertisers, you know, let them know that we're a nice platform. Can we just circle back to the bit where you said users aren't spending money on the platform? You said that. I tried to push back on it because it's just it's... about finding that balance. We need a holistic approach here. This needs an action point. Excellent. So what are the next steps? Oh, I have chat GPT. I can ask it to write a detailed action plan. We'll play it by ear. We'll see what chat GPT says. I think what we need to do is just find balance. Seriously, I left Google for this. Okay, that's our meeting done for today. Um, actually, if you could write the most nonsense corporate English sentence in the comments, anything I missed, let me know in the comments. My favorite ones, I'll give a heart. I'll see you in the next class. Bye.